So let's start. What is jihad? Well, there's only one jihad in the sense of the word means effort. So it's, and that's all it means, effort. Or, and so the, you could have jihad to mean, you, you could have jihad against doing, staying up late and doing a book report. That would be a form of effort. Now, what Muslims, of course, know is that most of the jihad is associated with, and so therefore they say, oh, that's not the real jihad. The real jihad is the greater jihad, which is the inner struggle that all religions have, that is to become a better person. Well, remember me, I'm the science guy, I do the counting. So I took all the hadith, these are traditions of Muhammad, from Bukhari, which is the best known collector of these, and there's 7,000 of them. 21% of these 7,000 hadith relate to jihad. And of these, if we take out less than 2% refer to jihad as a spiritual struggle, instead, 98% of them were cutting off heads and killing Kafirs. And Kafirs are not Muslims. So, so what is this story? There's a, uh, a lady in the House of Representatives here in the United States who talks about the struggle and jihad is not killing others. It's to be a better person. Is, yes, she just told you that. That, that is the so-called greater jihad. She's trying so to she, divert your attention from the real jihad. Well, not real the other jihad, which is violence against the Kafir. So she's talking about the 2% yes. and ignoring the 98%. Well, sometimes we have to do a little fudging, you know, to make it look good. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Um, you've spoken about the fact that the sword, or the use of the sword, or I guess in modern parlance, uh, any violence against non-believers is the least dangerous of jihad? What do you Precisely. mean? Precisely. Well, now, by the way, if you're getting attacked by a knife, a Muslim wielding a knife in London, all of a sudden that kind of jihad is the overwhelming importance. There are fewer people killed by jihad in the United States than do probably texting while driving, all right? So that's what I mean when I say it's not that bad. Now, if you're the, you or your family's involved in this, that's terrible. But from a statistical standpoint, it's not that significant. Whereas producing a textbook which tells the lies of Islam is the, is the jihad of speech and pen. So if you go to school here in the seventh grade in Tennessee, you'll be told in the seventh grade in a book that Islam was the highest culture that has ever lived, that the highest point of human history was in the golden age in Baghdad and, and uh, Spain. You'll be told in this textbook that women gives, the first to give women the rights was Islam. The first democracy, the first constitution was Islam. And so it goes on and on and on. And by the way, it's subtly, and oh, Islam provides protection to the Jew and the Christian. So this is what you'll learn in the textbooks. This destruction of, this is now planning basically pro propaganda lies into the children's lives. And so I maintain that that is more dangerous to us as a society than someone getting stabbed in the back or, or killed in a car crash. Well, obviously, if you can see the army coming and they have whatever weapons, then the natural inclination of all humans is to defend themselves against the seeable known enemy. What you're talking about is attack from within with an idea. Yes. And this is far more dangerous. Because, and if it were just this one textbook, but it goes on and on and on. I mean, I hear, I hear endlessly there's so-called bridge building, interfaith gatherings. And... I'm astounded as to how the Muslims will look you straight in the eye and tell you a lie. Maybe it's a have the lie of a half truth. But on the other side of the equation, the clergy who are there, be they Jewish or Christian, they just smile and eat it all up. This is disastrous. So how is it getting approved? Approved? Dr. Bill, I mean, you have education boards that review curriculum before it's adopted by the school board. Yes, but they want to be tolerant in a multicultural society. And so therefore they don't want to upset a minority. And uh, even though there's 1.8 billion of them, Muslims are a protected minority. So therefore we do everything we can to keep them happy because we're tolerant. We will tolerate anything, Barry. Well, we may tolerate it right into our own destruction, Dr. Bill, and that's what scares the hell out. That's what's happening now. Thanks for joining us on American Truth Project. 
I want to thank our special guest today, Dr. Bill Warner. I urge all of you watching today to go to his website, Political Islam, and start ordering books. You've got your homework cut out for you. You need to know what he's talking about before it's too late. Remember, text from your cell phone the word TRUTH to 88202, 88202. You'll be signed up for our free text message service, so you'll get this and all our videos for free on your cell phone every day or whenever we release them, and we never charge for any of it. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.